Hey everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. And as always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week we don't have any further information on Time of Legends Joan of Arc, Steam Watchers, or Hell the Last Saga, but let's get to the rest of them. For Solomon Kane today, we wanted to share with you the ship information that we've been given by the shipping company. So here it goes. One 40-foot container and one 20-foot container were already sent to Quartermaster Logistics in North America. They departed on January 2nd on the One Helsinki 043E and are scheduled to reach port on February 5th. Six 40-foot containers are bound for Meeple Logistics in France. Four of them departed on January 10th on the CMA CGM Bougainville 414W and are scheduled to make port on February 4th. The other two containers departed on January 20th on the APL Lion City V.0FM69W1MA and are scheduled to make port on February 18th. One 40-foot container is bound for Spiral Galaxy Games in the UK that departed on January 11th on the Evergrade 1121-009W and is scheduled to make port on February 6th. One 20-foot container is bound for VR dis distribution in Australia, which departed on January 16th on the OOCL Soul, that's S-E-O-U-L, 070W and is scheduled to make port on February 14th. Now four more 40-foot containers are bound for QML in North America, one of which departed on January 22nd on the 1 Honolulu 211E and is scheduled to make port on February 23rd. The other three are scheduled to depart on January 29th on the Northern Juvenile 311E and make port on March 9th. For Reichbusters this week, just a very short update that the Errata Pack is now finished production and we are trying to book a ship for transport. So stay tuned for more updates there. For Super Fantasy Brawl today, a quick update that the second print of the Force of Nature expansion and the French version of the core game are done with production and will be available again in our eShop as well as for those who were missing that in their orders very soon. For Enchanters today, a number of concerns have been raised by our customers and we wanted to take time to address them here today. We haven't been ignoring these issues by any stretch of the means as some would like to believe, but We've simply been discussing them internally and deciding on the best course of action. So let's talk about them. First, the counters are totally uncentered. Well, we took this issue to the production department and they confirmed that the produced counters are within three millimeters of tolerance, which was agreed upon with the factory. Therefore, it's not a faulty product. Second, the box is bigger than it should be. Well, the box was intended to fit all the cards sleeved, and this is exactly what it does. Furthermore, we have some space for future expansions so that you don't have to worry about where those will fit when they come. Third, the plastic tokens are not easily read. This is not a fault of the factory. The tokens, when plastic and of a single color, are usually like this. Now, I personally don't think that they're difficult to read, and they're certainly not more difficult to read than other plastic counters that I've used in the past, so I think this is probably more of a personal rub for some than anything else. But even still, I would like to recommend a couple methods that are sure to help heighten their visibility if you're in that camp. One solution would be to paint them, as I've seen some do who posted their pictures. You'd only need to do so to the numbers, and this could be easily achieved with a fine-tipped paint pen. If you choose to paint the whole tokens, it would be a bit more time consuming. Now, granted, if you don't have the resources at hand for such a thing, this could be somewhat costly. But another similar yet less costly solution would be to apply a single wash to the tokens, and this would allow for better visibility. 
You could also take this method a step further and get different colored mat washes to match the color of the tokens. But again, it just depends on how far you want to take that idea. Fourth, the card separators are too short. Well, the dividers are one centimeter higher than the cards, high enough for the faction symbols to be clearly seen and for enough of the faction names to be read. All of them are also color coded to enhance the separation from one faction to the next. Fifth, rules are not always clear enough. Now, we appreciate that some of you have questions on the rules. Even though everything was reworked by Jendi, by incorporating all the feedback they had received on previous projects, which would frankly, I guess intuitively, kind of make these rules at least as good, if not better, than previous iterations. We will, however, start gathering points that need clarification on the Enchanters Guild Facebook group and have an FAQ page on our website uh, sometime in February. And finally, with regards to the veteran and veteran plus backers that have reported a card quality issue, we have confirmed with our production department that there is a linen finish on our cards. However, there could be a difference in the feel as the card stock we used is of a bit better quality than the previous. We appreciate this concern and we are working internally to find the best solution. And when we have that solution, we will be sure to update you all on what's gonna happen. For Darkest Dungeon today, we wanted to continue our new hero spotlight, even though we concluded last time with the promise that we will be back soon with more unpleasant things. Most of you, really, most of you were really excited to learn more about the upcoming pledge manager and late pledge for the game. But now that the pledge manager is open, we thought we don't want to ruin the fun and keep the spirits high with one more hero spotlight. But of course, the promise still stands. We will come back to more unpleasant things very soon. For today's Hero Spotlight, we will talk about a practitioner of black arts, the beloved occultist. The occultist is a hero that prefers to be in the back lines, mainly because of its very low health pool, which is one of the lowest in the game, but it can also excel in almost every position, thanks to a very versatile set of skills. With a decent dodge value and with resistances to debuff, blight, and bleed, the occultist can also secure a decent survivability throughout the game, if needed. But of course, the thing that really makes a hero stand out in Darkest Dungeon, the board game, are its skills. So let's take a look at the occultist's seven skills. With Sacrificial Stab and Hands of the Abyss, that can be used mainly from the front lines. The occultists bring things to close and personal by inflicting a lot of damage to his enemies at the same time stunning them. Of course, when you look at the abyss, we all know what happens and by doing so, the occultist also lowers the torchlight, which could be a bit annoying for other heroes in the party. But the occultist doesn't always need to go close and personal in order to inflict pain to its enemies. With Abyssal Artillery, which hits multiple targets, and Damon's Pull, which also pulls the target, he can do damage from a distance. And while at a distance, Weakening Curse and Vulnerability Hex provide indirect support to the whole team as they make enemies easier to hit and more susceptible to damage. Last but certainly not least, Weird Reconstruction is probably the most powerful healing skill of the entire game, but it's also very unpredictable as it can leave its target bleeding. Also, not too comfortable. And with that, we reach the end of our second Hero Spotlight, Torchbearers. Until we meet again, try to keep your stress low and your spirits high. I am back! He hasn't caught on yet. This is good for us, right? Yeah, super. Anyway, here's the thing. I'm going to talk about three games that I've been playing recently, and then I'm also going to talk about one Kickstarter. Let's talk about the Kickstarter first, and then we'll get to the other three games in just a minute. Now, the Kickstarter that has really caught my eye that I've just kind of caught on to, and yes, I know, they really kind of released this information back in May of 2020, and I've kind of had my head stuck in the ground with mythic and i haven't really been keeping my eye out so yeah i'm a little late to the party but come on games 
is running a Kickstarter this year for Masters of the Universe. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember as a kid playing with He-Man, playing with Skeletor, playing with Man-at-Arms, uh, playing with uh, that dude that had, I don't remember his name, but that dude that you could turn his, turn the little knob on it and he had different faces. <sighs> Beast Man, come on. This is something I'm really, really looking forward to. Um, it just really hit on some cylinders. He-Man, first of all. Second of all, Come On Games, super good company for creating miniatures. And then I found out that Michael Chennault is going to be one of the designers. I've really enjoyed some of his stuff. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him on there. Did some more reading. Looks like it's going to be scenario driven and then you can also piece together armies and just battle this is something i'm really looking forward to so if you haven't found out about it or if you haven't looked into it you probably should check out masters of the universe the board game coming out from Simon on kickstarter this year now to some of the games that i've been playing recently and first of all i want to i'll just get this one out of the out of the bed out of the bend pretty quick Got my work copy of Solomon Kane in, and so me and a buddy took and got out the right hand of Doom and played through it this weekend. It was so fun. Now, I know this is my company's games. Well, not my company, but the company I work for. This is our game, and this is something that you guys have been waiting for. I cannot tell you how much fun we have with this game, uh, with, with this scenario, the, hand of, the right hand of Doom. Um, there were there were a couple, at least two or three, um, uh, really cinematic times, and one of them was at the very end. So cinematic, major victory, super fun. We had a great time. We were still thinking about, we're still talking about it. And that was a couple days ago when we actually played. So this is something I'm I've, I've really just had a great time fun, and I wanted to share it with you. I'm not wearing my mythic hat right now. I'm just trying to be as open and honest with you as possible. This is this was a very fun experience. Now, the first time we tried it was on Wednesday last week, and I was trying to go from memory. <laughs> my memory ain't that good, and we stumbled a lot, and we made a lot of mistakes, and so we were like, okay, let's just pack it up for right now. We'll come back on Saturday, and uh, we'll, we'll get some stuff done. So I read through the rules again. Got brushed up and everything like that. Had a super time on Saturday. Great time. Great fun. This has got some really interesting mechanisms that work together in such a way that make intricate situations possible. All right, now the next couple of games are a couple of two-player games that are kind of my go-to. If I want kind of like a uh, two-player abstract strategy game. Now, you guys know from my time at the Dice Tower, I'm not a huge fan of abstract strategy games because for some reason, people think that abstract strategy means that it also needs to look abstract. This is not the case. Um, so uh, these are a couple of two-player abstract strategy games that I intend usually to pull out whenever somebody, whenever it's just me and somebody else. And maybe they're also kind of gateway experiences. They're, they're not big on gaming or maybe they're just new to the hobby or something to that effect. These two games work very well in that situation. First one is Onitama. Now Onitama is put out by Arcane Wonders. It was part of the Dice Tower Essentials line. Yes, I know, get over it. But this is a really fun two-player abstract strategy game. The cool thing about this game is that if an opponent beats you, you uh, literally gave them the moves in order to do that because there are only five moves that are used throughout the entirety of one game uh, and they float between the two. So you'll start out with two moves on your side. Your opponent will start off with two moves on their side. A, a fifth move is turned over and that also helps determine um, which player goes first by a little icon in, in the corner of the card. And the first person is able to make a move with one of the two moves that they have. Once they've done that, they take the move that they used, they put it over here, and they swap it with the one that, they, uh, that, that was placed out there. So now there's another move that's out here, and now your opponent gets to go first, uh, gets to go, and they'll use one of the turns that they've had, or one of the moves that they have, and then they'll switch it with the one that's out here on the side. And so you're constantly kind of 
revolving and rotating these different moves throughout the game. And you're trying to either get your sensei onto the seat of power of your opposing uh, dojo or whatever you want to call it. Um, or you're trying to capture the other person's sensei. Uh, those are the two conditions for winning. And it's just really a tight back and forth game that is very, at some times, unforgiving, but also is a lot of fun as well. And the next abstract strategy game that we're going to do here is Santorini. Now, Santorini is also a, another two-player game. You can actually, it's more than that, isn't it? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, two to four. You can play with four players here. Look at that. I, I've only played it with two players. I haven't played with more, but uh, this is a two-player game as far as my experience with it, but you can go up to four with it as well. It also has a really cool expansion called the Gods expansion, which allow you to break some of the rules that the game presents to you at first with just the base game, base way to play. Um, and you can kind of ease your way into that. They have uh, simple God rules, and then they all have, also have more complex God rules. So you can also ease your way even further into expansion once you once you decide to, you want to start using it. But this is not this really has some nice curb appeal. Let me tell you, um, this is a game that I can almost guarantee you when you have it set up on the on the table, people are walking by like in a game shop, like that happens right now, right? Um, sad face. Anyway, uh, when people are walking by, this one just goes, hey, look at, look at me. Look at this. Because it, it looks so good with all of the white pieces and the little blue domes that are on top. And if you get the miniatures painted, um, they, it looks really, really good on the board. Um, now, a friend of mine, somebody who will not... Vernon, Vernon Piper, he actually painted the 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 uh, his copy of Santorini the white buildings he actually painted them stucco white which looks ex almost exactly like the white that comes in the box but it's stucco white why because it makes them look a little bit more similar to the actual real buildings of Santorini Vernon you have you have a painting problem sir so um get that looked at anyway I've taken a lot of time we better get out of here before he picks up on us see you later take care now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or you just want to see what he might spoil. But that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.